When we simplify a radical that contains a variable in the radicand, the first thing we're going to do is state any restrictions on the variables before we simplify. In this first example, I can see that we have a square root. Because the index is even, that's going to be a 2 there, I know that there could potentially be a restriction. I'm then going to look at the operation. So I can see that 64x squared, I'm multiplying 64 times x squared. Because we're multiplying, I'm going to take a look and see, okay, is there any way that we can end up with a negative radicand? Because this happens to have an exponent of 2, no matter what I put there for x, if this is a negative x value, when I square it, it's going to become a positive. So because I have an even exponent on my variable, and because we are multiplying, there is no way that I will get a negative radicand. So my restriction is just that x has to be an element of the real numbers, or x has to be a real number. Now when we go to simplify, 64 is a perfect square. So if I take the square root of 64, I'm going to end up with 8. So I'm just going to put that up top here. In terms of the variable, x squared also happens to be a perfect square. I'm going to take the square root of x squared, so I'm going to cross that out, and then the square root of x squared is x. I'm going to put that up top there. So if we take a look at this, 8 times 8 gets us back to 64 x times x gets us back to x squared. So 8x times 1 out front is just 8x. There's nothing left in that radicand. So the square root of 64x squared is just 8x. In our next example, let's begin with the restrictions on the variables. So again, it is a square root, so I know that I have to have a positive radicand, or 0 for a radicand, and then look at the operation. So we are multiplying these three bases together. So 45 times x squared times y to the the power of 5. Is there any number for x or y that will get us a negative radicand? If so, we have to restrict those variables. So I can see here, if I start with the x, this again is an even exponent. Even if x was a negative value, as soon as I square it, this is going to become positive. So I have a positive number times a positive. This is going to be positive. And then this one here has an odd exponent. If I do have a negative base for y and raise it to the power of 5, this potentially could still be negative. So I'm going to have to say, okay, y has to be greater than or equal to 0. Both x and y have to be real numbers. Let's try to simplify this now. So I can see that I have a square root. What is the largest perfect square that we can pull out of 45? Well, we know that's 9. So if I square root 9, I'm going to get a value of 3. So we can go ahead and put that up top. And then I'm going to still have this square root of 5 inside there. And then we have an x squared. Now that is a perfect square. So when I take the square root of x squared, we can cross that out, that's going to give us x. So we can go ahead and put that up top. And then we have this y to the power of 5. Now, because it's a square root, we are pulling groups of 2 out of here. I can't pull perfect groups out if I have 5 y's. So I'm going to go ahead and break this into y to the power of 4 times y. Now, y to the power of 4, if I square root that, I'm going to get y squared. So I'm going to go ahead and put that up top. And then I'm going to take a look at what's left. So I'm still going to have the square root of 5 in the radicand, and we're still going to have the square root of y in the radicand. So if we go ahead and multiply everything up top by 1, we're going to have a coefficient just of 3xy squared, and then within that radicand, we're still going to have that 5, and we're still going to have that y. So this is the simplified value. There is no more perfect square within that radicand. Another way that you can think about this is we're going to take this same radicand and I'm going to just write out all of the factors. So if I write the prime factors of 45, 3 times 3 is 9 times 5, that gives us 45. x squared is just x times x and y to the power of 5 is just y times y times y times y times y. So we're multiplying powers with the same base. We're just adding those exponents to get y to the power of 5. Now, if you take a look at the index, we have a square root. So I have an index of 2. So I'm going to maybe go ahead and write that here. That means that we are pulling out groups of 2. So 3 times 3 is my first group of 2. When I square root that, we're going to get 3. So I'm going to put that up top. 5 does not have a second 5 that we can pull out, so I'm going to leave that x times x, there's another group of 2. When I square root that, I can pull out 1x, and then my y's. So I've got two y's there, pull out that group, and we have a y up top. I have two y's there, pull out that group, we have a y up top. I'm left on the inside with this 5, so I don't have a second 5 that I can group it with. 
I'm also left with a Y. I don't have a second Y that I can group it with. So we end up with three times X times Y times Y. Y times Y is just Y squared. So three X Y squared is the coefficient. And then within that radicand, we still have that five and we still have that Y. So five Y is the radicand. Let's try to simplify this next one here. And because I have a variable in the radicand, I need to state the restriction. So it is a square root. That means I could have a restriction on this. I am multiplying. So because I have a positive value here, I know that this has to be positive. Look at the exponent. Because that's an even number, any potential negative base will become positive once I raise it to the power of eight. So in this case, Z just has to be an element of the real number system. Because it's a square root, we're gonna say what is the largest perfect square that we can divide evenly into 112. You might have to grab your calculator and then go through your list of perfect squares to see if you can get the largest one. So in this case, 16 is going to go evenly and that's going to leave us with seven. So when I take the square root of 16, I'm going to be left with a four, so I'm gonna put that up top. And then I'm going to take a look at my variable here. So I have z to the power of 8. Because it's a square root, we're pulling groups of 2 out of here. I'm going to be able to get four perfect groups of 2 out of that 8. So when I square root that z, there will be no z's left in the radicand. I'm going to put the four z's up top. I'm then going to multiply 4 times 8 is 32 times z to the power of 4. And then within that radicand, we're still going to be left with that square root of 7. So that I'm going to have right here. And again, in the beginning especially, if you want to actually write this out, we have 8 times, and then 112, if we break that down into its prime factors, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 7, so this gives us 112, and then we have times z 8 times here. Again, look at the index. This is a square root, so we are pulling groups of 2. So there is one group of 2. I can pull out the 4. Uh, 7 does not have a partner to go with, so I'm going to leave that 7 there. And then we can pull out one group of 2 z's, put that z up top, Another group of two Z's, put that Z up top. Another group of two Z's, put that Z up top. Another group of two Z's, put that Z up top. And just remember, we are multiplying all of those together. That's going to give us that eight times four, 32, times Z times Z times Z times Z. We've got Z to the power of four. And we still have that seven in that radicand because it does not have a second seven that we can group together and then square root. And then when we take a look at this last one here, again, this is a square root and we are multiplying. My variable has an even exponent. So I just have to say that T has to be an element of the real number system. And then even though this is a decimal, I recognize 49 is a perfect square. So grab your calculator and what value do you get when you take the square root of 0 decimal 0049? And you're going to notice that it is a decimal that terminates. It's a terminating decimal. So when we square root this, we're going to get a perfect square. And we know that t squared is a perfect square. So when I square root this, I end up with just 0.07t. There is no radicand left because this is a perfect square. This is also a perfect square. Let's take a look now at some examples involving the simplification of cube roots. So we're going to begin by stating the restriction on the variables because we do have three variables within that radicand. But because it's a cube root, we have an odd index. It is possible to have a negative radicand. I can cube root a negative number. So in this case, because it's a cube root, I just need to say that all of those variables have to be real numbers. And then because it's a cubed root, we're now looking to pull groups of three out of those variables. So if we begin with the A, Right now I have five A's. I can pull one group of three out of those five A's and that will leave me with two A's left. The cubed root of A cubed is going to be just A. So we're gonna take the cube root of that, pull it out of that radicand, and then we're gonna stick it up top there. And then we can see that we have that A squared left over. And then I've got B to the power of four. Well, I can pull one group of three out of those four Bs, and I'm going to be left with one B left over. So we can go ahead and split this up. And again, 
the cubed root of b cubed is 1b. So I can take the cubed root of that, I'm pulling it out of that radicand, and let's stick it up there on top. Now within that radicand, we still are going to have the cubed root of that a squared, and we still are going to have the cubed root of that b. So when I go to simplify this, if we multiply everything up top by everything out front, which in this case is just 1, we're going to have a b, that becomes the coefficient, and then we still have that a squared times b inside the radicand, and we also still have that c. Because we don't see an exponent, we know that that's an exponent of 1. We cannot pull a group of three c's out of there because we only have one c. So that c is also going to be inside that radicand. In the beginning, some people do find it easier, instead of just breaking it up like this, to actually write out, for example, all five of those a's. So we can take a look here and say, okay, if we're cube rooting, five a's multiplied together, and then we're multiplying four b's together, that's that b to the power of four times the one c. Look at the index. So we know because it is a cubed root, we need to pull groups of three out. So when I cube root this, I'm going to pull out, there's one group of three a's, take the cubed root of that, and we're going to get one a. I now have two a's left, so I cannot pull out another group of three. I can pull out a group of three b's, take the cubed root of that, which is b, so we can go ahead and stick it on top. I only have one B left, so I can't pull that out, and I only have one C left. So now you can see we have A times B on the outside is the coefficient. We have two A's on the inside, we have one B, and we have one C left in the radicand. Let's try another one here. So again, because it is a cubed root, we can have a negative radicand. So x and y, my variables, just have to be elements of the real number system. Now I'm going to take this one and begin by just writing everything out. So 54, if I write it as a product of its prime numbers, is 3 times 3 times 3. So 9 times 3 is 27, times 2 is 54. I have 6x's, so I'm multiplying x times x 6 times, and then we have 8y's. Because it is a cubed root, I need to pull groups of three out. So I can go ahead and say, okay, there is one group of three right there. So when I cube root that, I'm going to stick that three up top. There is only one two, so I don't have two more partners that I can pull that out. That's gonna stay there. I then have a group of three x's here that we can pull out, and I'm gonna put that on top. I have a group of three x's here. When we cube root that, we're gonna pull that out and put that on top. And then I've got a group of three y's there. We can go ahead and pull that one group out. I can pull a group of those three y's out there. When I cube root y cubed, I get y. And then look to see what we're left with. So we still have this two on the inside of the radicand. And we also still have those two y's there. So simplified, if we multiply everything up top, so three times x times x times y is going to give us that three x squared y squared times the cubed root, and then we still have a two on the inside, and we still have those two y's, so that becomes the radicand. Now this helps you to understand the process, but it's gonna be time consuming if we do that every time. So as we get faster, let's take a look here. We have a numerical coefficient, and similar to what we did when we just had the cubed root of a straight number, we're gonna look for the largest perfect cube. So if you take a look at your list of perfect cubes, we can see that 27 divides evenly, and so I'm gonna go ahead and take the cubed root of 27, which we know is three, stick that up top and then take a look at this we have six x's well we know if we're pulling groups of three out of there I can get two groups of three out of those six x's and there will be no x's left over so I'm just going to go ahead and take the two x's out of there and then we have eight y's again I'm pulling out groups of three so we know we can get six y's out of there and I'm going to be left with two y's so I'm going to go ahead and cube root this and we know the cubed root of y to the power of six is y squared so we're getting two groups of three y's out of those six y's and then we have two y's remaining so then we can go ahead and say okay what's left we still have the cubed root of two that's going to be inside the radicand we still have the cubed root of y squared that's going to be inside the radicand so on the outside we have that three x squared y squared that becomes the numerical coefficient and then on the inside we still have the two and the y squared that make up the radicand and finally, we're now going to reverse the process where we begin with a mixed radical and we're going to turn it into an entire radical. So we're going to start with the restriction because again, this is a square root. We know that the radicand has to be positive. So two is positive. This n also has to be positive in order to get the entire radicand to be positive because we are multiplying here. So we're going to begin by saying that n must be greater than or equal to zero. And then because we square rooted when we pulled it out, when 
we put it back, we're going to square it. So we're going to apply this exponent of two to both the three and the n. So that's gonna give us nine n squared. And then we're gonna go ahead and multiply. So nine times two is 18. And then when we're multiplying powers with the same base, we're gonna add the exponents. So we have two plus one is going to give us three. In our next example, we have a cube root here. So because it's a cubed root, the radicand can be negative. I just have to say that b is going to be an element of the real numbers. Now, even if this was a negative base, that even exponent will make it positive, but it doesn't matter. If it's a cube root, we could have a negative base. This three b comes from cube rooting when we pulled it out. So when we put it back, we're going to cube it. So we're going to apply that exponent to both the three as well as the b. So three cubed is 27, b cubed times 7b squared, and then we can go ahead and multiply. 27 times 7 will give us 189, and then when we're multiplying powers with the same base, add those exponents. And with practice, you will be able to take this original question and go straight to this step here. So if I was doing this, I would go eight. Because this is a square root, I know that when I put it back into an entire radical, I'm gonna square it. So I'm gonna go eight squared is 64, times three is 192. I know that x squared raised to the power of two becomes x to the power of four, times another x gives me x to the power of five, y squared to the power of two is going to give me y to the power of four. So eventually we'll go from here right to here when we're starting with a mixed radical and then putting the entire thing underneath that radical sign.